Content Groups is a great way to analyze your website's data and identify what kind of content performs better. In this video, we will take a look at how to track them with Google Analytics 4. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to the Analytics Mania YouTube channel, where I teach people how to work with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. So if you want to stay up to date with GA4, then consider subscribing to this channel. Content groups in Google Analytics allow you to group content and then see more aggregated data, for example, based on page category or maybe type of content. Let's say that I have three pages on a website and I know how many views that each page get. But with content groups, I could group some of these pages based on their topic or their category or something else and see a bit different report. For example, I'm looking at content group X and I know that this content group has 35 views because it is a sum of these two pages. And then I have a second group where that third page is included. And now I see that I get more views when it comes to content group X. For example, here I have a report of top pages and I see the number of page views, but I could also group these pages based on their topic. For example, on my blog, analyticsmania.com, I mainly teach about Google Analytics 4 and Google Tag Manager. And there are different levels of difficulty. Google Tag Manager for beginners, intermediate Google Tag Manager, and so on. So while this report allows me to look at each page individually, I could use a content group instead of page path and then I can see how many page views do I get based on those topics and their difficulties. My most popular content here is Google Tag Manager for beginners. So basically blog posts that cover simpler topics. Now let's take a look at the example of how to set this up with Google Tag Manager. Here I have a demo Google Tag Manager container where I have a basic Google Analytics 4 setup. In this video, I presume that you already know how to install GA4, but if you don't, then take a look at the description of this video where I have another tutorial that teaches you the installation process. Here I also have a demo website and let's say that I want to track different sections of the website. So if someone lands on a page, I want the content group to be called homepage. Then if a visitor goes to blog, the value of content group should be blogs or articles or something like that. Then if a visitor goes to catalog where the visitor can buy some products, then we can have some other value for content group like collection or products or e-commerce section of the website. So the naming convention is solely up to you. And the ways how you can approach this can be different. For example, you might try to create some custom setup where you check the URL of the page and then you could send that value of content group to Google Analytics 4. Another way could be more advanced, but also riskier, where you try to scrape the website. And if a particular element on a page, for example, page title says this, then you would send its value to Google Analytics 4. But the most robust way would be to ask a developer to push the value to the data layer. And in this video, I'm going to focus on that. Here is a demo code that you could ask a developer to add to the website, but this code should be added above Google Tag Manager container code. This means that when Google Tag Manager loads and when your G4 configuration tag fires, this data would be already available in the data layer. The name of this parameter can be whatever you want. You can call this content group, section of the website, part of the website, or anything else. And this value should be the name of the section of the website where a visitor currently is. So for example, if I go to the blog, then the value right here should be blog. If the website visitor goes to homepage, then this could be homepage. If the visitor goes to products, then you can name this catalog or products or something else. And now let's pretend that I have asked a developer to add this code to the data layer and we need to check if that is done correctly. So let's go to Google Tag Manager, click preview, and then copy the URL of the page where you're going to test this. Click connect. And once Tag Assistant has been connected, which is the preview mode of Google Tag Manager, let's go to its dedicated tab. And then I will see that there is a message. And if I click it and I expand it, I will see section of website blog. So the developer has done the job correctly. Now we need to send this value as content group to Google Analytics 4. Let's do that. Let's go back to Google Tag Manager, tags, and open our Google Analytics 4 configuration tag here click on this pencil, then fields to set, add row, and enter it exactly like this, content underscore group. And here in the value, we must insert some variable that 
returns this value. Since we are working with a data layer, we have to create a data layer variable with this exact name right here. So since I'm working with section of website, I must use this name. If you have something else like content group or anything else, then use that value. So let's double click this, copy, and then in the value right here, we need to click this button to create a new variable. Then click plus, variable configuration, and then select data layer variable. Here we have to paste that name of the parameter from the data layer. And now I will name this variable. You can enter here whatever you want. What is important is that this part is exactly as it is right here. Then click save right here. This kind of setup is enough for regular websites. But if you're working with single page applications, the same thing of adding this kind of parameter must be done in all Google Analytics 4 tags. This includes configuration tags and event tags. Now let's test if this is working properly. So click preview, click continue, then I click continue loaded, click the tag, and I see that the content group was sent. Let's go to Google Analytics 4 and check if this data is received by our property. Here I am in my demo GE4 property. Let's go to configure, then debug view. And here I should see events such as page view. I can click it and I see that one of the parameters is content group. And that is all you need to do when it comes to setting content groups. This kind of parameter is automatically recognized by Google Analytics 4 and it will be available as a dimension in other reports. For example, if we go to reports, then engagement, pages and screens, that dimension will be available right here as well. The reason why I am not seeing anything here is because not enough time has passed. When you start sending content group to Google Analytics 4, the data will start appearing only within the next 24 hours. Sometimes it might take even 48 hours. And you need to keep in mind that this applies only to future data. Historic data will not be affected. Also, one more thing to mention is that in several situations in the past, even after waiting 24 hours, the content groups were still not displayed in standard reports. And in those situations, what helped is the customization of the report. I don't know if this issue will repeat itself in the future, but if you face something like that, try playing around with what I'm about to show you. So if you don't see content group even after you know 48 hours or more, then click customize report and then try to disable some metrics and click apply and see if you start seeing the data there. For example, I remember that in one situation, removing new users metric and clicking apply fixed the problem. But maybe that was a temporary bug and you won't face this in the future, but I just wanted to mention that because, you know, maybe that will help you. Another useful tip that applies not only to content groups, but to standard reports in general, is that if you want to build a similar report in explorations, because explorations have some additional features, you can click on this comparison icon right here and then click explore. Then Google Analytics 4 will try to rebuild a similar report in explorations. Of course, not all metrics will be available right here because not all metrics from standard reports are available in explorations, but the ones that are, they will be displayed right here. And then if you want, you can customize it further by adding some additional metrics and dimensions or segments right here. If you have worked in the past with Universal Analytics, which is the older version, you probably remember that you could create up to five content groupings. In Google Analytics 4, you have only one. And if you want to create four additional or you know five additional groups, you will need to use event scoped custom dimensions. So basically you will need to go to Google Tag Manager, for example, and then send an additional content group that you can call something like that, but you can use any name right here, then send the value, and then you need to register this parameter as a custom dimension. If you want to learn more about custom dimensions, I have another tutorial that I will post a link to it below the video. And for the end of this video, just a friendly reminder that after you implement content groups and you test them, don't forget to submit your changes in Google Tag Manager. In other words, you should publish them. So click submit and then follow all the steps until you publish this new version and content group tracking is then activated on your website. And that is how you can track content groups with Google Analytics 4. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4, then consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.